Papa Podcast presents 2.1 Chemical Notations, Symbols, and Isotope Form, Part 2. Let's look at chemical notation, chemical formulas, and isotope form. So this is a continuation of 2.1. And here we have chemical notation. So all atoms of a particular element have the same number of protons in their nucleus. So all carbons, every type of carbon, has six protons. And if you look at the atomic number, Okay, on a periodic table, you'll see the atomic number for carbon is six, so six protons. The atomic number refers to the number of protons found in the nucleus of any given atom, uh, which is we're going to designate with a chemical symbol of Z. Okay, uh, so this is what's referred to as chemical notation. So here we're going to put the um, uh, the number of protons or the atomic number. X is going to represent the chemical symbol, and a is going to represent the mass when we combine the protons and neutrons, or just look at the mass number and round it. So the mass of an atom is located primarily in the nucleus of an atom, and it's combined masses of the protons and neutrons. So combine the protons and neutrons, or take the mass of an atom, subtract it by the atomic number, and it will give you the number of neutrons. Again, keep in mind that for the mass, you want to round the mass to the nearest whole number. So here is an example of a chemical notation. And in a chemical notation, we're going to write the symbol. Up at the top uh, left, we are going to put the atomic mass rounded. And at the bottom, we are going to put the um, atomic number, which will designate the number of protons. And then taking these two numbers here, this 12 subtracted by 6, it will give me how many neutrons are found in a carbon atom. Now let's look at chemical formulas. So what we're going to look at here is the comparison of an atom versus an ion when we are writing chemical formulas. So here we have a uh, chemical formula for oxygen. The chemical formula for an oxygen atom is O. But when we're designating the ion version of oxygen, we still write O, but we include its charge. And this charge, if you're using my periodic table, you will find uh, the charges. A copy of, the, uh, of my periodic table can be found in the description below. Uh, so it, when we just write the symbol N, we're referring to the nitrogen atom. But when we write the charge or the oxidation number, as we're going to eventually learn, um, the N negative three, we are now referring to the nitrogen ion. And, and the, the ions of non-metals, okay, so the ions of non-metals will have an IDE ending. So notice an oxygen ion can be written down as an oxide. A nitrogen ion can also be written as a nitride. A bromine ion can be written as bromide. Calcium, on the other hand, because calcium is a metal, we just write the word ion with it. Oops, that's not supposed to be car uh, calcium. Uh, that's supposed to be it. this. So here's the change calcium, and this is just a calcium uh, Adam, I need to change that also on my slides. Anyhow, uh, so there is there you have it. Um, so if you write the atom symbol, we are referring to a neutral atom, and a neutral atom have equal number of protons and electrons. Ions, on the other hand, will not have. So either your protons will be greater than the electrons, or the protons will be less than the electrons. But be aware that the protons never change. The only thing that can change are the electrons that circle around uh, in orbit around the nucleus. So isotope form, uh, last form that uh, I, I want to uh, address. Uh, all neutral atoms of the same element contain the same number of protons and therefore the same number of electrons. 
provided that they're all atoms. But now the number of neutrons can vary. And when that neutron count varies, so here we have the standard carbon that we can extract from the periodic table. So we write it down as carbon 12. That number after represents the mass number of that atom. So if that mass number does not match that number on the periodic table, we are looking at a different isotope of that atom. So we're looking at a different isotope of carbon in all three of these examples. So in this example here, notice we've got six protons, six protons, six protons. However, in this, we've got six neutrons, right? So 12 subtracted by six, six neutrons. 13, the mass subtracted by six, seven neutrons. 14, the mass subtracted by six neutron, uh, protons gives me eight neutrons. So isotopes of atoms of an element that have different number of protons, or sorry, have the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons, thus giving it a different mass. So when we write it as such, carbon 12, carbon 13, carbon 14, this is what is referred to as isotope form. So here's another example of some isotopes. Um, we're going to talk a little more about isotopes in the next lesson, 2.2. Some isotopes are more unstable than others. Their nuclei are more likely to decay, releasing energy and subatomic particles spontaneously. So this process is what's referred to as radioactivity. All uranium isotopes have unstable nuclei and therefore uh, are they are referred to as radioactive isotopes or radioisotopes for short. Uh, oxygen isotopes have a very stable nuclei. Um, however, 10 scientifically made isotopes of oxygen are considered unstable radioisotopes. These are three examples of very stable isotopes. Here is the standard oxygen that we can extract from the periodic table. Here is an, is a, an oxygen. So some of the oxygen in the air atmosphere around us, only 0.04% of the oxygen around us is actually of a heavier version of oxygen. And a small 0.20% is made up of an even heavier uh, oxygen having an additional neutron. But not be aware that the, the uh, proton count and electron count are exactly the same. The only difference is their neutrons will vary, thus giving them, each one of these, a different mass all together. So here we have uh, some practice problems. They're at the end of my, my, uh, my slides uh, in the link found below. Uh, try these uh, practice problems out and you can take up the answers on my website. I hope you liked this video. If you did, do not be shy to hit that thumbs up button. And while you're clicking the thumbs up, click on that subscribe to stay tuned to my new videos. Thanks for watching.